Hi, it's B with Crafting Daily Dose, and today I have another alternative for the June 2022 paper pumpkin called Pick of the Crop. I really had fun with this card, and I hope that you'll like it too. On the front, we've got some extra texture and a little bit of ink blending, and then when you open up the card, it turns into this pop-up picnic basket, complete with its own little handle. Now, if you would like to make this card, don't be intimidated. We're going to go step by step, and I can't wait to show you. Here are the pieces for the card. Let's start with the ones that come from the kit itself. So this is the card base that we're using, but we're going to make some modifications together. And then I've got several die cuts. This is the single die cut that represents two of the large baguettes. I'm using two of the cheese slices, and I'm able to do that since we got so many extras in this kit. But if you'd rather save your pieces, then it's okay to use just one. I'm using two of the lavender pieces as well, and if you've run out, or if you want to have more, you can always create your own using the stamp set from the kit. I've cut up the envelope into a couple of different pieces here. This larger one is four and a quarter inches across by three inches in height. And then I've got two pieces here that are the same. Each one is four and a half inches across by one half inch in height. And now let's take a look at the extra pieces. So this is a piece of crumb cake cardstock that is five and a half inches across by eight and a half inches in height. And it's been scored at four and a quarter inches like we usually do, but there's also an additional score line at seven and a half inches. Then I've got one more piece of crumb cake cardstock. This one is three and a quarter inches across by two inches in height. So it's this separate piece right here. This is basic white cardstock. It is four and a half inches across by two and a quarter inches in height. And then this is a little piece of soft suede cardstock. To cut that out, I've used one of the label dies from the Sending die set, and there are two of them, so I'm using the longer one. If you don't have this particular die, you can just cut out a piece that's going to be approximately three and three quarter inches across by one half inch in height. Either way, you're going to want to score this piece at one quarter inch and at one half inch from both ends. And you can round off the ends if you would like. And that's it, we're ready to get started. Here's that piece of crumb cake cardstock, and remember it's got those two score lines already. So let me preview for you what that's going to look like. This is what it would look like from the side. So this middle panel is going to be the base of the card, and then this part, once it pops up, that's going to represent the side of our picnic basket, and then this largest panel up here is going to be the front of the card. Now this is ready to use as is, but I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to make it look more like a picnic basket. Maybe you already have something in your stash that could do that, like an embossing folder that has a basket weave texture. I don't have that though, so I'm going to be using some scoring tools to kind of hint at that texture. Now I'm using my scoring board because it's easier to show you, but you can do the same kind of thing on your trimmer. And basically all I'm going to do is to make some random score lines, both horizontal and vertical, on this large front section of the card. I'm also going to do a little bit on this part, which is going to be, again, the side of a picnic basket. I don't really need to do anything down here because this is the base of the card and people don't tend to look at that so much because that's really going to be on the back. So I'm just randomly, very randomly, creating some lines. Now most of this middle section is going to be covered up, so I don't really have to do anything there. Now this video is speeded up, but even in real time, I'm doing this pretty quickly. I'm not trying to be super careful or precise because it's actually better to have a more weathered look and it definitely does not need to be perfect or you can skip this step. Once I've done some in this direction, then I'm going to turn it and then do some in the opposite direction. Now, 
Next, we're going to prepare the card base. Now, take a look at this plain side. We are going to trim off one inch from it. So what I'm going to do is put this in my trimmer and I'm using the measurements that are here on the right hand side. I'm placing it at one inch and I'll go ahead and cut that off. Now this piece that I have is going to be five and a half inches across by one inch in height, and I'm going to cut this in half along the long side. So half of five and a half is two and three quarters, which is right here. I'm going to save this piece because I'm going to use it to stamp on some of those blueberries. So I'll set that aside. For the remaining piece, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half along the short side. So we're taking this and we're going to go ahead and place it. This is one inch, so half of one inch is one half inch. So I'm going to put it like that. Now there's not going to be very much for me to hang on to once I've placed my blade down. So I've just got a little sticky note here that I'm going to put just right at the edge not so far that it's gonna end up getting cut, but this is just going to give me something to hang on to. Okay, so from that piece, we have created these two tabs. Each of them are one half inch across by two and three quarter inches in height. And I'm going to take and score them at one half inch from one end. So, doesn't really matter which end we're doing. I'm going to put this at one half inch using that measurement that's over on the right. And this time I want to be careful to use the light blade for scoring. I don't want to accidentally cut this. And then I'll do my other one as well. So waste not, what not, we're using all those parts. I'm going to set this aside for now as well. We're turning back to our card base. Now we're going to focus on the printed side. I now want to score at one inch from this edge. So I'm putting my measurement here at one inch, making sure to use that lighter blade. And now I'm just going to take it to the very edge here and I'm going to trim off just a little sliver. That's going to make it fit into the fold better and it will prevent you from having extra paper that gets all bunched up in the fold. So since we're cutting such a small sliver, if you were to try to start cutting from the edge, it's going to meet up with a lot of resistance. So I'm just going to pick a spot here kind of in the middle, and I'm going to press down firmly. You can kind of feel and hear that going through the paper. And once it does, then you can pull down and then go up. You don't have that kind of resistance, and that way you're able to cut even really skinny, skinny slivers like this. Now, in the final card, this card base is going to be folded like this. This is gonna be part of the lid of the picnic basket, and then this is gonna be what the food rests on. Now, if you notice in the sample, we had those two pieces of cheese that stood up. If you don't wanna bother with that, you can just glue your pieces of cheese down flat, in which case you're already done preparing this card base. If you do want those cheese pieces to stick up though, we need to create some slots for them. I'm going to be creating two because remember I'm using two pieces of cheese. If you've opted to only do one, then you only need to do the first of these cuts and not the second. I'm going to take my card base and I'm going to turn it so that the plain side is on the left and the printed side is on the right. And I'm going to place it at the five inch mark right here. Now I'm going to do a little bit of partial cutting in order to create that slit. 
Now I'm going to be cutting from approximately three and three quarters of an inch down to approximately four and a quarter of an inch. Now why am I saying approximately? Well I actually want that cut to be a little bit wider than that so that my tab that goes in there can move more freely. So I'm going to be cutting a little bit before three and three quarters and a little bit after four and a quarter. So let's first find the measurements. So three and three quarters is going to be right here. I'm looking at the measurements along my guide and then there is a notch right on the side of my blade. So I'm gonna line that up at three and three quarters. I'm gonna push the blade down into the paper and I'm going to jiggle it up just a little bit. So I'm going up towards the top, just a tiny, tiny amount so that my slit is gonna be a little bit bigger. Now I'm gonna go down to four and a quarter inches, switching hands here so that I can see. Here's four and a quarter. And I'm gonna let myself go just a little bit past that. Okay, so now that creates a cut that's a little bit wider than half of an inch. Now the other thing that's going to make it easier for our tab to pass through is if we turn this from a slit into a slot. And we do that by moving our paper over. You can move it over to the left or to the right. It doesn't really matter, but just a little bit. So it's not even a sixteenth of an inch that I'm moving it. Just a tiny, tiny amount here. And I'm going to create that same cut again. So from a little bit before three and three quarters to a little bit after four and a quarter. So I'm going to show you right here. It may be hard to see, but if I use my snips to kind of get in there, you can see that there is just a little bit of space in between those two cuts that I made. And it's so little that it's hard to get my snips in. There we go. So that's it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Now, if you're only putting in one cheese, then you would want to stop there. If you're going to use two, then we're going to do the same process again, but this time we're going to be at four and a half inches. So it's going to be right here. And we're going to be cutting from just before four and a quarter inches to just past four and three quarters. Once again, I'm going to move my paper over just a little bit, not even to the next tick mark. So it's more like 1 32nd of an inch. That sounds intimidating to say, but it's just a little jiggle over. And now our card base is ready. Now we get to play with the inks. I've got my silicone mat underneath, and then this is that little piece from the card base that we have cut off. I'm stamping up three sets of blueberries using Starry Sky ink. And then I'll come back with my sponge dauber to add on a little bit more ink just to give the images a little bit of variation in color. And then I'll cut those images out with my snips. I'm going to make rough cuts first and then come back to catch the details. And notice that I'm moving my paper more than the scissors.
Next, I'll use the Calypso Coral ink with the Hello stamped onto the small Crumb Cake cardstock panel. I love the size and the font of the sentiment. While I have this piece out, I'm going to use a different sponge dauber with my Crumb Cake ink just to give the edges a little bit more of a weathered look. I'm starting off the edge of the paper first and then sort of making little circles to pull in some of the color. It's better to start out lighter and then add more ink if you want to because it's really hard to take it away if you've done too much. I'm going to clean off my mat here before working on my other piece so that there's no stray ink to cause problems. And now I'll do the same thing but with the larger piece. I'll be adding ink around the edges and masking off any areas where I don't want ink. In this case it's going to help bring out some of that texture that had been added with scoring. So here's what the piece looks like after ink blending. Next, I'm going to add just a little bit of color to one of my pieces of cheese so that the two of them are a little bit different from one another. I'm using my dark So Saffron Blends marker. And now the light version of that lens marker. It's just a way of deepening that color a little bit so that they're not quite the same. Here are our two card bases. This is the inside of the one that we just ink blended on. And I've got that larger panel up here at the top. For this card base that came in the kit, we're going to fold along this score line as a valley fold, and then along here as a mountain fold. So if you look at it from the side, it looks like this. I've already reinforced these folds with my bone folder. Now I'm going to apply adhesive to the back of this piece. So it's the plain section here, we're applying it to the back. I'll go ahead and use glue here. Now, again, make sure that you've got the inside of your card, and then we are going to line up these edges. So I'm lining up the top and the sides. And with glue, you've got a little bit of time to make adjustments if you need to. Okay, once that's set, I'm going to go ahead and fold along this crease line and then fold this one as well. This other piece is going to come on top like that and they're going to be adhered together along this area. So go ahead and put glue there. I'm holding this down flat and bringing my other section over on top of that exposed glue and give it a good press. Let's see if that's had time to set. That's looking good. You can see that once you open the card, it's going to pop up and then you're gonna be able to see what is the side of your picnic basket. Now it's time to insert those tabs that are going to support the cheese so that it stands up when the card pops up. Now if you've decided to glue down your cheese flat, then you won't be doing this part. Basically we're going to take the tab and then fold it along that score line. 
it is ultimately going to be inserted through the slots that were cut and this part down here, this gluing tab, is going to attach to the base of the card. That's what's going to give it that support. Now, this part is a little bit trickier, but don't worry, we'll take it step by step. I'm going to start by going ahead and making sure that I have folded this and reinforced that fold. But then I'm going to straighten it back out again, just in order to get it to fit through the slot. Now I'm going to put this on the side just so that you can see what I'm doing. Here I've got just a little scrap of cardstock and I've placed some glue on it. I think you can see that. And I'm just going to use this as an applicator so that I can get glue on that bottom tab. So that's what it looks like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my card is open so I've got nice 90 degree angles throughout. I don't want my card to be kind of slanted like this. I want it to be nice and squared up. Then I'm going to take my tab and I'm going to push it down until it makes contact with that base. And I'm trying to get this support tab to stand up nice and tall. And then I'm just pressing down and giving that glue a chance to set. So I'm just going to test it now. I'm going to close my card, folds up flat, and then when I open it, that tab stands up. Now this is probably going to be longer than what you need, but don't worry about that. You can trim that off. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other tab. So again, I'm keeping my card to the side just so that you have a better view there. I'm going to take this other piece, fold back along that score line and reinforce it, but then straighten it back out again so I can insert it into the slot. And once it's there, I'm going to just take my glue applicator, my little makeshift applicator, And I'm just going to try to line this up as best as I can, make it stand nice and tall and straight. And then press down. Once that glue has set, I'll test it to make sure that everything works properly. Now, if yours leans a little bit, you can see that my first one I don't know if you can tell, it kind of goes off at an angle there. That's okay if it's a little bit off side to side. As long as it's straight going up and down so that my cheese stands up straight. Once those are in position, then I can go ahead and attach the cheese pieces. And I'm just going to offset them a little bit so that you can see the darkened one sort of in the background there and then this one is a little bit in front and off to the side so that you can see both of them. Once again, we're going to test it. You can see what happens when the card closes and what it looks like when it opens up again. So that's looking good. There's little bits of the tab that's poking out, but that's very easy to trim off. Now I'm going to glue on the bread and the little blueberries. Now, even though it would be easier to glue on these pieces before the pop-up is assembled, I almost always do the pop-up part first. That's because I wanna make sure that the trickier part is working properly before I go ahead and invest in gluing down the rest of the pieces.
This piece of basic white cardstock is going to be for the message panel back here. And the two strips of the envelope are going to help to decorate this piece. Now I've cut them to be a half of an inch in height just so that it's easier to work with. But I'm actually going to be gluing these behind that message panel and having just part of it peek out. So it's only about an eighth of an inch or so that peeks out, but of course you can decide whether you want yours to show more or less. Since it's glue, you've got a little bit of time to adjust things before it sets up. And then I'll add one of the lavender pieces. And now we'll get to decorate the front. By using some of the same elements for the front as had been used on the inside of the card, that just helps to pull the look together. And now for the final touch. This is going to be the handle for the picnic basket. And remember, it's got score lines at one quarter and one half inch from the ends on both sides. And this inner one is going to be folded as a mountain fold like this. And then the outer one is going to be folded as a valley fold. You do the same thing on the other side, mountain, valley, and so when we look at it from the side, you can see how that's going to form a handle. This part here is going to be what attaches to the card. So I'm going to put glue, but only on one side. It doesn't really matter which side. I'm going to keep it kind of three-dimensional like this while I apply it on. And what I'm doing here is I'm applying it to this section right here. And I'll just do my best to eyeball centering it both horizontally and vertically. It doesn't have to be exact. So this is the side that I chose to put glue on. And so that is now attached. This side is free right now. And the reason that I left it free is because I want to adhere it down in a way that this whole thing can press down flat to go inside the envelope. It's going to not be, I'm not going to be able to nail it if it's poking up like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and put glue on this last little tab. So these folds here are going to lie flat. And then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and tuck this back and then tuck this under. So let me show you from the side what that looks like. It's formed like a little Z there. Then I'm going to press it down flat and hold it in place. Then when it's set, I can go ahead and push it up and then you can see that it's going to look like a handle, but when you need to press it down, you know that it will lie down flat. So that's our finished card. There is some texture and ink blending on the front, and if you wanna see what it looks like on the back, this part here, remember, is our handle. When the recipient opens the card, it turns into a cute little picnic basket, and this handle can also pop up 
to complete the look. This is where you're going to write your message. And if you'd like, you can write your message before you adhere on the message panel. Or if you're doing it after the fact, all you're going to need to do is press everything down in this direction. It's going to lie down flat so that you can go ahead and write on it. So again, what you would do to be able to write is just shift everything in this direction. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this dose of creativity. If you get a chance to try out the project, I would love to see it. So share it in my Facebook group or tag me if you're sharing elsewhere. If you're interested in Paper Pumpkin but don't yet have a demonstrator, you can find that link as well as all of my other links in the description box below. I hope to see you again next time and until then, have a great day!